Okay guys, let's have another little uh, garage band tutorial. I'm just going to show you some ways that you can use the drummers in a garage band in a more creative way. Okay, so here I've got a little um, synth pattern. Okay, and I want to get some drums to go with this. Now I can just create a new track, drummer track and uh, that puts the eight bars of drumming on there. I can make this whatever length I want, so I'll bring it down to the length of the synth pattern, right? And, um, and then I can choose my drummer. Um, you know, I could start with Julian, say, and I'll get the, um, the ball here for loudness and complexity, and I'll set it at 75% loudness and 75% complexity, somewhere around there. I take off the fills, I don't want any fills, and um, take the swing off. And then what I can do is I can take all the bottom end drums out, and then I can go through to see what Julian will give me with shaker and hi-hat from his pattern choices at this 75% loudness and complexity. Okay, pattern two, pattern three, Pattern four, pattern five, that's quite a nice pattern, six. Okay, but just, you know, making these little riffing shaker hat and tambourine type patterns, <coughs> pardon me, it can be quite laborious, fiddling around with the three possible drums, you know, a shaker, a tambourine and a hat or whatever, the two or three upper end high-end um, percussion instruments and you know which which of the two or three hits at what position and all the rest of it what loudness etc what timing it's quite handy to use this editor to quickly knock up these high-end shaker hat tambourine type patterns okay let's say no nah, that's not really doing it for me let me try this layer drummer okay take out the bottom end drums 75 percent loudness 75 percent complexity let's take the percussion out and let's see with tambourine, shaker and hat, no swing, let's see what layer offers. Um, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four, pattern five. So I think, yeah, I like pattern three. I like the, the first beat here with that open 909 style hat. Okay, but the rest of the pattern plays something different. So what if I wanted that, I like that little riff in, of, the, of the three percussion instruments in the first beat. What if I want that to repeat over the other three beats? Well, what you can do is you can't, in Logic, you can get a drummer region like this and drag it onto any instrument track and it will convert that drummer pattern to MIDI, but that doesn't work in GarageBand. I drag this drummer region onto this instrument track it says not a drummer track drag a MIDI region here right or maybe I create an instrument track a blank one and then try and drag it onto that again I can't do it but what you can do to convert um, a drummer region to MIDI notes is you just select that drummer region command C to copy put the player to wherever Select another track where there's some empty space long enough to, to paste in the pattern, starting at the playhead, and then Command V. And basically, this is a MIDI note copy of that. It's exactly the same. Move this out of the way, put that onto the drummer track, and it'll trigger the drums exactly the same as that yellow pattern. Okay. And so now I can go into this pattern and tweak it to do what I want. So first of all, let's reduce all these in length, just so it's easier to see them. So I like this opening beat here, but I'll get rid of the rest, and then copy these over. So I'm going to get that same hi-hat, shaker and tambourine lick in each beat of the bar. Then I can tweak it, you know, I could add in some doubles, like uh, maybe I'll put um, a double there. Or 
or maybe that double comes here after the first beat. If I want to, I can then apply swing. Typical house sort of swing is this 16 swing C. So I select all the notes and it'll swing um, only the notes that are on the um, the second and the fourth sixteenth in a beat. Yeah, maybe I want that to come there instead and swing it. Etc. But I've I've let's take the swing off actually. Put it just back to straight sixteenths. So what I've done is I've used the drummer editor to quickly create a shaker hat, uh, a, a tambourine shaker and hat pattern, which would be quite time consuming to do. Converted it to MIDI, and then just copied over the bits of it I want. I could have tweaked this in any way I want. And now I've got a completely unique hi-hat shaker and tambourine pattern that I couldn't have got from this editor. <coughs> okay. And now I've got that, I can, I'm can. i free to add in any other drums to go with it. Let's get rid of this, we don't need that now. So, um, let's say I want to add in a kick now. Now, I can add a kick into the same kit, all right? Kick C1. There might be a secondary kick in a lot of these kits. Oh, there's a secondary kick. It's got that strange sort of warbling sound with it. There's a soft kick. So, each of the... Drum, because although these MIDI notes are now on a drummer track, replacing the yellow drummer region, it, it triggers the same as if this was an instrument track, with the with the um, deep tech electronic kit on it, right? So, um, so I, if I like this kick drum, I can I could put the kicks in manually from this kit, All right? And then I could say, okay, let's have a clap in there. Something like that. But I don't like these claps. They're not doing it for me. So let's get rid of them. So how the hell do I get different claps? If I like the high-end stuff, Shake Out Tambourine from this Deep Tech kit, but the claps, I don't like the claps in this kit, well, what I do is I can create another drummer track. Or rather, in this case, an instrument track. I put an electronic kit on it, electronic drum kit. And I'll start with the, the top one after party. And then pencil in a region. And this can be the, the region for my claps. Right, so... Um, so that's the clap sound for the after party kit. Whoops, for the after party kit, right. So let's put the, um, let's put the notes in, and then we can try different kits. Okay, so then I've got the claps in the right position and now I can change the kit and, and every time I change the kit on this track these claps will be playing a different clap because each kit is going to have a different clap. Yeah, I quite like that clap or the um, Boutique 808. Yeah, so you go through and you can... Auditions are different claps. And bear in mind that every kit you load has got usually a couple of claps. Go back into the editor. This is the first clap on uh, D sharp one, but there'll probably be another clap further up here somewhere. In this case, there isn't. There isn't another clap for this kit. Let's try indie disco. Okay, uh, not a very clappy sound at all. It's more like a, a, a clavy type sound.
Um, okay, nothing much there, so Modern Club. Let's have a listen. That's a, again a weird clap sound. Have a look up, there might be some other claps. Like that. Okay, so have a, I'm, let's try this big room again. That's a good solid clap. Is there another clap? Because um, the only problem is uh, in GarageBand, down the side here, we don't see the names of the drums in the kit. In Logic, you do, um, but you don't um, in a GarageBand, all right? So just you've got to check if there's a different clap. There's another clap. So sometimes a kit will have two claps, but the primary clap is on D sharp one. So I'm gonna go with this clap, and then I've got a clap coming from this kit, hi-hats and kick coming from that kit. Hi-hats, shake, and tambourine and, kit, and kick. But what I can also is I can make another drum track, because we, we can make another, uh, another instrument track with another drum kit on. Electronic drum kit, again, I'll go with the default after party. And and this, I can go into this pattern here, which is my shaker tambourine and hats. Take out the kicks, click on the note to select all the notes on that row, backspace to delete. No more kick in this pattern. That's just shaker and hats now. All right? This has just got the claps. So this can be my kick. Pencil in the kick. Two, three, four, and a little sub kick there. And again, I can go through and audition the different kicks. Each time I change the kit, the kick notes in there will be triggering the kick drum for the different kit, and I can try them out. And again, some of these kits will have two kicks inside. But there's a secondary kick for this kit. C1 and... Uh, what is that? Uh, C, D, E, F, F2. Okay, so let's try Big Room. Boutique 17. That'll be an electronic star kick. Analog. 808. Crate Digger. Deep Tech. Etc. Okay, so I'm going to go with the deep tech one. Now I'm already using the deep tech kit here, so I could have put those notes in this pattern. It would trigger the same kick, because this and this kit are the same. But by separating it so the kick drum notes play this kit, and all the high end stuff plays that kit, I can EQ and compress them differently, because there are no separate outputs for the drums in these garage band kits. Okay, so now what I can do is, here's my high end stuff. Okay, let's mute these two. Here's my high-end stuff, shaker and hats. Hmm. Not sure about that that sound. I might get rid of those. Let's hear it without them for a second. Yeah, I like it better without that. Okay. Um and now I go into the smart controls for this track. This is all just my shakers and tambourines and what have you. And I can um, add reverb if I want. Delay. And that'll be the delay here in the smart controls. If you open up the plugins, there's the delay that this control will be adjusting. 
So if you want to change the delay time, you can do it here. You know, I could just it to eighth dotted or something. You know, whatever. I'll put them both to an eighth. Um, also, I can, um, using the uh, effects here, just this part of the drum track, which is just my high-end stuff, I can compress it here, uh, EQ it here, any way I want. So I could use this um, shelving EQ at the bottom, and I could just bring this up to cut out all the bottom end. So I'm getting very thin, fine top end. Yeah, I'm thinning it up there. Yeah. Okay, and then that's that, and then I can bring in my kick here, and this is on a completely different track for a different kit. Um, so I can EQ the kick drum and compress the kick drum any way I want. Right? So I can get the compressor here, and I could apply compression. I can EQ it, the kick drum, any way I want. So I could, um, I could scoop out the mids like that. Give it some high end treble and some um, bottom end bass like that. All right, there's my kick mixed completely differently, EQ differently to the hi hats and shakers. And then finally, I've got my clap here. Again, I can compress it, overdrive it, do whatever I want, put reverb on it. Overdrive. Echo. Compress it, whatever I like. And so I've achieved... I'm, I'm mixing the drums now on their own separate tracks. High-end stuff, shakes and hats, tambourines, claps, kick. Or there could be another track with just the snare. You see what I mean? And that way you can mix them separately. Whereas if you use just one kit and put all your kick, snare, hat, claps and all the other uh, notes in there, then you've only got that one kit with one EQ for it and one set of controls for compression or anything else. But this way, each section of the drum kit, high-end stuff, mid-range stuff, claps, toms, snares, etc., and the bottom end stuff, kicks, etc., they can all be on separate tracks, and you can mix them that way. And then there's the whole thing of using a drummer pattern initially to get your to get your kind of idea together and then turn it into MIDI notes and then edit it from there, which is a really useful way to quickly get top-end stuff going, particularly the top-end patterns. And there we got it. It's a tight little pattern there. Now let's just make one more drummer track. Or one, yeah, one more drummer track. Um, and this is the deep tech kit playing the high end stuff. This is the deep tech kit playing the kick drum. And we do use the big room for the claps. But just to show you the difference, this is. Layer, who is contributing most of the kit apart from the claps, and if we just get her on her own playing a pattern, like the same shaker and hat pattern, but she'll play the kicks and the clap. Now take these ones out that I mixed and listen to the difference. This is this is layer on her own. Now, even if I went into the smart controls here and I compressed it, but I'm compressing the whole thing, kick, snare, clap, everything, uh, kick, clap, and top end stuff. And then I could, you know, um, EQ it, do the same thing, give it some bump here at the bottom end, scoop out the mids, 
give it some high end boost up there, but it won't. Have a listen. Then I can go back to the controls for the smart control and go, okay, I can adjust the level between the kick, hatch, percussion, and shakers, etc., here. But if I want to put a little bit of reverb on anything, it puts it on the kick because this is being applied to the whole kit. Right? So there it is, EQ'd, you know, adjusted in level to try and balance the kit, but listen to it. Now listen to the composite kit I made here using three different tracks, high end stuff, claps and kicks, all EQ'd and compressed separately. Can you hear the difference in tightness and everything? And then this one. There's no comparison, is there? Okay, so there's some tips. You can, you can use the drummer editor. It's really useful, particularly for getting these high-end patterns together. Then you can convert them to MIDI notes, as I showed you, and tweak it, adjust it, change it, um, to get exactly what you want, and then add in the other stuff on different kits which gives you your top end, your mid-range stuff, and your bottom end of your kit. And there could be another track, as I say, for snare. There could be another track for toms. There could be another track for percussion. Um, and you're dividing your kit into different layers that all contribute to the overall beat. But keeping on separate tracks like this, you can EQ the top end stuff separately and, and affect the top end stuff separate. You can EQ and affect the mid-range stuff separate. In this case, just the clap. You can EQ and affect the bottom end stuff. In this case, just the kick separately. And overall, you get a much tighter, more refined, polished sound. Compared to the straight kit. And don't forget, you've always got your... Um, percussionists which can contribute once you've built your custom beat you've got your new percussion drummers and um, they can you know be put on and added to your custom beat you know whatever you like Add in a bit of percussion as well. Let's just have uh, Kabasa because we've got Shaker and Tambourine in the pattern there. Let's have the Clave in. So hopefully that's given you a few ideas to how you can kind of work with GarageBand <coughs> in a bit more effective and creative way, all right? where it comes to making um, electronic drum patterns.